الرجاء جعل وجهك Please put your mobile phones on silent, please. In the name of Allah, the compassionate, the, the merciful, ladies and gentlemen, peace be with all of you. On behalf of His Excellency Dr. Jamal Sanad Suedi, Director General of the ECSSR, I would like to welcome all of you to this lecture this evening entitled UAE Tolerance and the Four Pillars of Its Continuity that will be given by Mr. Khaled Amr bin Giga. Mr. Khaled currently is the media advisor to the General Association of uh, Arab Writers and the editor, executive editor-in-chief uh, of the Arab Writer magazine. Mr. Khaled obtained a, P, uh, a master's degree in sociology from Cairo University in the year 1988. Moreover, he worked as uh, a lecturer in a number of Arab universities. Mr. Khaled has uh, an expense, a huge experience uh, in written uh, uh, media and journalism for 32 years, more than 32 years. He worked in journalism in Egypt and in the United Arab Emirates. He has published a number of books, uh, including the Algerian military establishments and its legitimacy. Chapters in the Bloody Story of Algeria, the Assassination of Boumedian. He also wrote Insights from the Triumph of the Will, the Journey of My Experience by the Thinker, the Great Thinker, His Excellency Professor Jamal Salant Suedi. And he has written and published numerous articles and studies in journals and many participations in political analysis in the news programs for a number of TV, TV and satellite channels. Now it's an honor to call upon Mr. Khaled to start giving his lecture. Please, the floor is yours. Peace be with all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor and a pleasure to welcome all of you and to thank, I would like to thank the Emirates Center for Strategic Studies and His Excellency, the Director General of the Center, Dr. Jamal Salant Suedi. And uh, I would like to rejoice with them in the celebration of the Silver Jubilee of the Center and looking forward to further successes by the Center. During the past four or five years, the attendance in the ECSSR, I mean my own participation, with the inauguration with every year for four successive years this is my first time i have uh, a lecture the fascinating thing is that uh, the lecture in 1994 was about uh, the elections in algeria and the uh, algerian army and the elections there now it coincides that i'm giving this lecture about tolerance under the uh, state where uh, my country is witnessing uh, uh, certain changes and only Almighty Allah what will, uh, will happen. In brief, uh, the center, I mean the Emirates Center for Strategic Studies and Research, uh, has been really uh, playing a great role and uh, I cannot say this as uh, a transient description. No, actually the ECSSR lives entirely in the heart and at the core of uh, all our developments. Uh, this uh, accumulating knowledge is what takes us to the topic of today's lecture, tolerance. First and foremost, we need to look into, do we now, while we're talking about tolerance, do we in general, do we like to introduce answers that have to do with us only in the sense that we, in the, there is a uh, collective uh, uh, rhetoric about tolerance, and the, there is a highly uh, evolving and effective establishment level tolerance in the UAE. This kind of recognition of tolerance and the role of tolerance, and at the, even at the regional and international level for the UAE in terms of tolerance. Should we talk about tolerance? In, a, in an entire lecture or a book, this is the first point. Secondly, is there something that is called Emirati tolerance, American tolerance, German tolerance? Is this fully accurate or not? These additions will maybe questionable or so. 
let's look into the details and uh, speak out loud together. In this lecture, we will be focusing on the Emirati experience in the field of tolerance. And uh, since it represents a massive amount of uh, tolerance and uh, the coexistence between other nations, and uh, it places others in the spotlight, especially that uh, we have seen many countries witnessing uh, sedition and uh, uh, violent wars, despite that they belong to uh, the same community and the same country. The Emirati experience, in, in my own interpretation of it, uh, comes with, while it is full of uh, full rejection of any violence that leads to hatred or hatred that leads to violence. And this takes us to the conclusion that if tolerance is well known to us, what do we mean? by the four pillars of uh, the continuity of tolerance. Can we call it this way? Is it a demand or a request by all humans in our uh, modern times, or is the UAE a special case? And this uh, four pillars of the continuity of tolerance, uh, and if we can encompass this concept uh, completely, we base it on human beings and the existence and the geography of the UAE, and also in terms of the history and the level of values established in the UAE, where in those four pillars, human capital represents the cornerstone of all achievements. It is really striking to see that uh, uh, when we talk about uh, after Van Dong uh, uh, for the non-alignment countries uh, conference, uh, he referred to the and many writings were made about the ability to be, or the tendency to be occupied. So he said that uh, uh, our countries would not have been occupied if it hadn't been uh, prone to occupation. Uh, his uh, translator or interpreter, Abd Salam Shaheen, said that Malik bin Nabi's concept was valid in his own time, but now we are at different times, and we are now prone to being backward countries. Between the, being prone to different uh, dangers or threats uh, and the ability to bring about uh, massive change in life is a very thin line in the sense that any event that we, or any objective that we seek to achieve must be uh, applicable. How can we uh, classify the UAE, and we will look into the concept of tolerance. How can we classify the UAE, and how can we classify the UAE in terms of uh, being prone? The, there are countries that are prone to chaos, but uh, the, they are encountered by uh, the Emirates' ability or the UAE's ability to remain steadfast and well developed. And we see underdeveloped Arab countries, but uh, here we see in the UAE uh, a high level of development that exceeds all uh, other Arab countries in an exceptional manner. We in Arabs, as a collective, we represent a burden to one another with our mistakes. So if I want to take this concept even further, if I want to develop, I develop within the Arab sphere. And if the Arab sphere remains, if it is going to remain underdeveloped, at the end of the day, this will be a burden for me. So in front of this situation, it cannot be possible to have tolerance in the full outcome of this uh, uh, logical analysis if we hadn't been able to toler tolerate others and to be able to achieve prosperity and success. It's not uh, a leadership decision only. It is true that uh, the wise leadership has taken the lead and has are issuing the legislations in this regard, but if the Emirati people have not had the ability and the uh, acceptability in terms of uh, accepting this tolerance, it would have been embraced in the UAE. So, in this context, I would like to reiterate the important role of the Emirati people. The uh, Emirati Union, the Union would have never been uh, achieved without uh, this ability. So, uh, many challenges and many tribal conflicts were there, yet the will and desire for achieving the Union had to exist uh, and achieve uh, this uh, uh, coexistence and accepting others, accepting first others who are different uh, the neighbors and the others. So 
in this context, the Emirati people, or at least as far as I understand, and I don't want to uh, uh, enclose our discussion about uh, uh, my own uh, experience with, with tolerance uh, uh, to others, but uh, in sociology, especially in the American School of Sociology, every special case is basically a general case or, or a public case. In the sense, uh, for example, if you are going to uh, ask for a woman's hand in marriage, this is done by millions of people worldwide. It may sound as something private or personal to you, but it is a public one in reality. In the same concept or in the same way, the human capital is the key driving force uh, and the effective element that drives forward development and progress based on uh, highly rich experience or to be maybe because the country is close to the uh, main domain of uh, revelation and divine revelation in Saudi Arabia. So maybe this uh, is the case that we can realize how great the role played by the, U the UAE have been and how the UAE sets an example of uh, global success at the level or at a situation when we see other Arab countries receding from all uh, international causes. In another context, or from a different perspective, my lecture, I try in this lecture to provide you with the, my interpretation of the experience of the UAE intolerance, not just based on the wise leadership's uh, decision, but also to in highlight the sound relationship between the Emirati people and also reveals the flow of the relationships at the international level, yet uh, we have to highlight this persistence on innovation and exporting those positive ideas as highlighted by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, in the sense that the UAE is persistent to export positive uh, ideas and concepts to the whole world, especially in terms of tolerance. Tolerance in the UAE has exceeded by far, in my own interpretation, the uh, constitutional aspect by establishing a ministry for tolerance. And in this case, it is important to introduce this highly important answer to the open question. Is the Emirati experience in the field of tolerance uh, able to be uh, replicated worldwide and be adopted uh, globally? Yet this question, from my perspective, is, emanates actually from another question. How can the UAE adopt tolerance while the entire world or humanity as a whole at the global level and at the local level, uh, government and uh, people worldwide are moving towards more hatred, war, there is a question, where is humanity heading? This question, from my perspective, is a highly problematic one for all experts in all domains of life. And finding the answer to this question and basing our answers on them or uh, uh, providing advice to decision makers in this regard, sorry, this uh, reveals the collective effort to, to combat these political diseases. The same way prominent scholars and scientists uh, uh, in the field of medicine try to find uh, remedies to dangerous diseases and they are facing many obstacles in this regard. If we try to dispel this question about uh, war and peace since they represent uh, a humanitarian or let's say a human situation since the dawn of history uh, they have become more like a profession and yet uh, they are also pertinent to the uh, fight for survival and they are based on the different decisions of political and military leaders. Yet the question focuses about how the world perceives of hatred and love and uh, this intolerance. Getting back to figures and to the, these perspectives, we see that there are, the figures are showing uh, rising cases of, uh, of hatred and rejection of uh, uh, immigrants and uh, the uh, global rhetoric that uh, rejects others. Yet uh, humans are moving uh, in a legitimate manner and they are transcending above uh, uh, local laws because uh, uh, humanity have to embrace one another. Since uh, there is a, a growing number of population, there is also, as far as I believe, I believe that humans are also with the love and hatred and tolerance and different perspectives, they have to embrace one another in the sense that uh, uh, ex extremism or hardlining approaches will exterminate humanity. 
from this perspective if we embrace this concept and if we believe that uh, humans are uh, challenging uh, the political and uh, uh, different situations in terms uh, of uh, combating all the these uh, extremist groups and racial groups yet we have to reach the conclusion that uh, tolerance exists in all countries of the world by one level or another or at one level or another we can say that in terms of quantity tolerance is widespread all countries are talking about tolerance uh, in addition to human rights as part of human rights if this is the global rhetoric or the world rhetoric in terms of uh, understanding and perceiving tolerance the uae is part of this global rhetoric also how can it stand out in terms of uh, its the ability to preserve further uh, elements of tolerance how can it excel in this domain while it is, it is located in this part of the world? Yes, we find it a very perplexing situation. According to my own interpretation of tolerance, the UAE is working quite diligently and persistently to highlight the qualitative concept of tolerance other than quantity it's not about uh, uh, having uh, tolerance at the human level or given lectures like this one or others the UAE is uh, translating tolerance into a highly civilized conduct that is transformed into a political and social action and in this context the UAE is launching a war against hatred trying to expand the qualitative scope of tolerance and thereby it strikes a balance in this equation which has been highly difficult to achieve worldwide and the most probable cause for this is that the UAE is keen on maintaining peace locally and it is waging wars against, against hatred globally so uh, you cannot uh, uh, really call for tolerance and then uh, uh, wage war on other countries uh, or uh, besiege them like Venezuela or so. So our problem with the West is that uh, the, 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 there is democracy in the West, but they don't want to have similar democracy in the East. When, they, when we have this kind of uh, democracy, they try to force it upon religion or creed or so, and not as a concept. We have our different experience in life in this region. The Emirati experience. on another aspect or on another level is capable at the level of the UAE to play a highly civilized role that uh, is that is proportional to its uh, size and uh, number of population but people say how you are talking about global issues neither the, the geographical aspect permits of the, this nor the population will the capital enable you here comes the level, the concept that we have said and the the way out of this uh, uh, complexity that we produce in the uae and export positive concepts and those positive concepts are expressed by a number of people uh, certain people or a certain nation what matters at the end of the day is to have the tools and the mechanisms to produce these uh, positive concepts in the sense that i can say this for sure i'm fully confident and fully aware that the UAE is capable, God willing, to achieve what others have failed to achieve in this domain. First and foremost, because it has a long-standing history in terms of tolerance. Secondly, because the UAE has had a great experience in gathering and uniting people. And thirdly, the wise leadership of the UAE is exerting great efforts through a proactive policy that has proven to be quite wise and realistic and we are not just saying that the UAE is fully aware, and we are not saying that it is a lot wiser than other countries, but at least the UAE is more aware of dangers, and uh, it is willing to participate positively in shaping concepts and policies that uh, boost tolerance. The UAE is no longer trying to be a partner in this regard. It has exceeded this in terms of the uh, diplomatic and political uh, mentality and thinking and approach it has exceeded the level of partnership to the level of innovation in this domain 
the uh, uh, educated people may find it difficult to perceive the Emirati experience. It may be difficult for them to understand the magnitude uh, and success of the Arab, uh, the, of the uh, Emirati success, uh, and the Arab question in this regard are quite legitimate, especially for those who have not seen the UAE closely. And I'm talking here about Arabs, non Emiratis, Arabs who are non Emiratis, those who have not, and even some of them are still living under the preconceived. Uh, concepts that are fully affected by the hardships they faced in their home countries uh, outside the level of work or uh, outside the scope of their work and uh, being uh, having uh, your uh, dreams shattered back in your home countries in terms of uh, achieving a decent way of life then we may this may take us to another objective discussion let's uh, uh, get rid of this concept of obtaining a job if you get out of this concept you will find that uh, another debate uh, takes us to uh, a domain where we really take pride in our success as Arabs through the success of the UAE. Some people compare the home country to the UAE and to the bitterness when seeing what happens in the expatriate, the Arab expatriates homelands and what's happening in the UAE. This is a legitimate right for them. I'm an Algerian citizen before anything else. And a Syrian is also a Syrian before anything else. And, all, and also the, the same thing applies to Emiratis. If we, it is difficult to say this, uh, except for a few that are uh, being uh, granted mercy except by Almighty Allah. If we get out of the concept of this comparison and that uh, our homelands are shaking and all what we have left in terms of our homelands, this, the, uh, as far as we boost them and we support them and keep them moving, this will be a win and a winning situation for all of us. Uh, the more we boost our homelands, the more we'll be able to achieve success. And in terms of the Emirati experience, we need to protect the success of the UAE. This is not an option. It's not an option that we have between this and that. This has nothing to do with the concept of nationalism. It has to do with the existence of Arabs as a civilization. And we have to protect the UAE in this regard. We are here. We're not saying that the UAE is uh, a, a country made of angels or so. It is more like any hum human uh, society. It may have uh, uh, errors and mistakes, uh, some of which may be critical ones. This is part of human behavior. And human behavior is uh, the product of all uh, human actions. And the more they work and the more they do, the more they make mistakes. As long as those mistakes do not turn into massive sins uh, that uh, become uh, a heavy weight for other people and generations. They were in this regard and at the level of tolerance, is not just uh, an outstanding country, an excellent country, when it is compared uh, between the center and the uh, uh, peripheral parts. It is also one of the key countries of uh, confrontation, especially that uh, it is de defending the Arab nation. In the past, our main uh, conflict was with Israel. And uh, now, we have a conflict with Iran and Turkey and others. So now, most of our Arab countries have become uh, at the front lines. So the concept of uh, confronting dangers is no longer restricted to Israel uh, uh, because we have many enemies now for many reasons. Back to the topic of tolerance. It may look like a regional and an ethical uh, and uh, a value-based situation and uh, uh, concept, some people perceive it as a state of weakness because uh, uh, the, weaker, the weak individual cannot be tolerant to the, the strong one. Here we are not talking about uh, uh, being uh, uh, tolerant in this sense. Tolerance is different from clemency. Tolerance is accepting your difference uh, from me and accept those differences. And here we see the social difficulty in this regard in our collective mind and collective memory. It is difficult to simply accept others who are different from us. Even the others in my own recognition or in our recognition of the differences, even as if it, is, if it feels like hell, just like Jean Persson, others are like hell, but uh, through them we perceive of ourselves. It is important to live with this hell to be able to perceive the concept of heaven. Personally, for me, my own uh, personal experience, the more 
I find non-Muslims in Ramadan who are eating and drinking through the holy month of Ramadan, the more I enjoy the month of Ramadan. This is their right to do that. And we have to uh, accept that. When we say that the UAE is calling for tolerance and uh, the development of civilization, some people may say, why are you uh, highlighting this concept? What exactly do you mean? Either you are talking about uh, 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 baseless uh, concepts which are uh, merely illusions uh, exported by the UAE at the global level and you are just uh, boosting them and therefore you are part of the propaganda and uh, you are just uh, uh, making propaganda for them or, other po or, or, or pol politicians, writers and other experts like me in terms of achieving certain gains and so are promoting for tolerance that does not really exist in brief. How can the UAE accept, adopt uh, the policy of tolerance while it belongs to a highly underdeveloped nation? How can a country like the UAE export tolerance to the world and export uh, positive concepts to, to the world? Isn't this a kind of contradiction? Maybe this kind of praise or let's say uh, some kind of uh, 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 propaganda or so, or do you, uh, do you think you are part of a certain concept? Linking the UAE to the Arab nation is a fact and a necessity. When, but we have to make a distinction. I hope we, we would like to highlight this point and analyze it properly because this is very important. Linking the UAE to the Arab nation is a fact and a necessity. When things have to do with the sense of belonging and the cultural and historical depth. All of us are Arabs. In terms of history, uh, Emiratis are Arabs. And in terms of culture, they are Arabs. But this link does not exist when we talk about the internal level. The internal level in the UAE, I mean the Emirati community. Here, we find the difference. We ideologically, uh, religiously, and historically belong to one another. But at, the different, uh, but at the internal level, we are different. And we have to understand and accept this difference because this helps us. When we talk about the internal level at the UAE, first, the, uh, I talk about the level of uh, uh, authority and uh, achieving uh, new uh, concepts and the acceptance of the Emirati people to the uh, concepts of tolerance and wisdom of its leadership. And here, there are certain uh, majlises where solutions are offered, cases are resolved. The, uh, this is a different form of democracy. And we have to highlight it at the Arab level from a civilization aspect or the, from the, the civilization perspective. We have to highlight this Emirati experience. So the call for tolerance in the UAE is not some kind of propaganda or so. Or it's not an illusion at all. It is a sign of strength and power. And uh, how the state uh, uh, defines the relationship between the expats and the Emiratis in the UAE and implementing tolerance in action that is tangible on the ground and making this a role model in the world. There is a joint uh, element with the UAE and there is a global joint element with the UAE. And by the way, this does not only surpass the entire Arab region, even it exceeds the GCC with a massive distance for the UAE. Tolerance in the UAE, then we have to highlight the concepts and the elements of survival. Or let's say the four pillars of its continuity in terms of tolerance. Tolerance here is not something that has emanated now in the UAE. It has been accumulating for a long history of the UAE. And uh, at least over the past 45, 40 or 50 years, uh, we cannot really talk about this uh, apart from the reality of the UAE. This, uh, this tolerance is the result of accumulated civilization and dealing with others uh, uh, by sea and uh, on land. Those who were drowning in the sea while uh, earning their livelihood and uh, uh, traveling to India and to other nations are the same ones uh, who are leading this uh, open-minded mentality on land. Geography and the uh, great status of the geographic location and the people and the leaders in this country have to be highlighted. This is the great tolerance in the past uh, that uh, was highlighted by the late Sheikh Zayed, God bless his soul, may Allah have mercy on his soul. Uh, he highlighted an 
instilled the elements and concepts of tolerance in the UAE and in the Emirati people as highlighted in uh, a number of research papers. Tolerance in the UAE today has its uh, legal framework uh, almost four years ago. Since His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed, since His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed issued law number two of 2015 of discrimination, uh, uh, the law discriminating, or let's say the law outlawing uh, uh, the, and prohibiting uh, uh, discrimination and uh, hatred and rhetoric of hatred. It provided uh, protection for the UAE and protection for the different cultures in the UAE and highlighted the tolerance as a tangible value in the UAE. Once again, I highlight this. It would have never been uh, possible to achieve this without the history and the rich history of the UAE. And uh, it wouldn't have been achieved without the ability of uh, uh, Emiratis to tolerate uh, others. Uh, and they have been quite patient with the hard nature and the tough nature they faced in the past. Now they are also showing and exerting the same patience with other nations. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, thank you for listening. And I'm ready for your question. Thank you. I would like to thank uh, Mr. Khalid for this uh, wonderful lecture. Now we will uh, uh, receive questions. If you have any question or intervention, please stand up, introduce yourself, and uh, uh, make your question as brief as possible to so we can take as many questions as possible. Please, start. Please. Peace be with you. Uh, Mr. Khalid, uh, good evening to you. First, I would like to thank you for this outstanding uh, uh, lecture, but I have a number of uh, brief questions. The concept of the four pillars of its continuity, what do you mean by that? The second point, you have highlighted that with regards to highlighting the concept of democracy, the West, as you have highlighted, you have said that the, the West is better than us. I have a small uh, uh, reply. Dr. Eid al -Yahya, mentioned in one lecture that if you see the West with all due respect to all nations and to all nationalities, you will see that the West does not, the West, the West have a small fraction of democracy actually. It is not true that everything said about the West that they are best or better. Maybe they have a number of good things. Yes, that's true. But it's not true that everything said about the democracy in the West is accurate. For, for example, you have hom homeless people in uh, uh, some countries in the West. The police do not protect the homeless because they are not taxpayers in one of those countries of the West. So the concept of democracy does not really exist in its concept. Uh, sorry for taking too much time, but uh, my last question is that uh, if the UAE is boosting the uh, policy of tolerance with in, in light of uh, many uh, trends against tolerance. I may draw up the policy and set up the objectives, but I don't care about what others do. Let whatever happens, happens, but I must have my own objectives and I'll pursue those objectives, especially that they are aligned with our sense of humanity. I cannot uh, uh, fix humanity as a whole and I, I need to do my best. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your questions. First, the four pillars of uh, the continuity of tolerance, I did not really analyze it in depth uh, because I just said that it, it is based on four key pillars, human, resource, human capital, history, geography, and the uh, uh, system of values. Uh, it is there, if we highlight it, uh, if we highlight those elements, they can uh, expand and uh, uh, highlight how uh, people coexist uh, and we realize how we reach this uh, level of tolerance. As for democracy in the West, I did not say that democracy in the West is good or beautiful. I said that they have their own experience and their experience, let's be honest, if we want to talk about democracy in the Western style, the cost will be very high. And the same way it was a very high cost experience for those communities. We are, can only pay the price to achieve our objectives in terms of change. I mean that I've not said that uh, Western democracy is a role model, but it is also 
a, a human achievement, a beautiful achievement. Otherwise, if we hypothetically say that we disapprove of that uh, democracy, I've given you an example of majlises or here in the UAE, uh, but and I, I agree with you that democracy does not fit us in many uh, aspects. Yet the situation, the question that keeps really uh, perplexing us is that we reject many aspects of the Western values, uh, but uh, we welcome them as politicians and uh, uh, investors and uh, religious people and uh, uh, atheists and uh, leftists. We leave our homelands and we go to the West. We leave our homelands in massive numbers. Those who uh, 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 emigrate because of their suffering, because their countries are suffering and their countries are uh, being poor because of corruption and because of... Uh, and those who are uh, uh, saying that uh, there is a wise uh, 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 and a just uh, uh, queen uh, in uh, uh, another country. So this kind of uh, dichotomy in Arab country, uh, Arab values, is really a lethal one. There is a massive exodus towards the West. Even those uh, who have been fighting, uh, even those who have been fighting the uh, French uh, occupation in Algeria, now they are doing their best to emigrate to France. So, as for shaping the policy of a certain country, I did not, I did not say that uh, we should not pursue our objectives. Quite the opposite. I'm saying that the call for tolerance is a wonderful thing, yet, beautiful as it is, it must gain more depth. In the sense that not all humans within the within a single community, not all humans have the ability to accept others with its with his or with the diverse nature and differences. Let's be honest about that. Sometimes we find ourselves forced to find answers to these questions. What happens when tolerance is in contradiction with sound nature? For example, when the West. Uh, uh, says that uh, an Arab country should have uh, a club for gay people. Now, this contradicts Arab values and our own cultural and religious values. So, tolerance, in brief, means that we accept others the way they are. And others also have to accept us the way we are. They may accept us or they may not accept us, but I'm not really seeking the recognition now or the other's recognition. What matters to the mast, to, to me in this regard, is that uh, whatever general rule I put uh, must not uh, be considered as a uh, rule for the entire community, because if someone else, other than the decision maker, is proposing this concept, it may be rejected. It is accepted because this concept is being proposed by authority, and the authority uh, find this response among people. My concept of the UAE is that uh, tolerance would have never been introduced uh, in, in this strong manner, without two elements. First, the, the uh, ability of people to be tolerant and having this rich experience. The, the Imran, the UAE, is very brave. The UAE is hosting 200 nationalities. It is a scary concept for all other countries. We have a single nation in our, my homeland, in Algeria. All of them are Muslims of the same sect, yet they are fighting with one another. So, we are witnessing a new phenomena here in the UAE. Thank you. Another question, please. And then if I'm not a lot of compassion, the most from Mohamed Abdel Blushi. Mr. Khalid, thank you very much uh, for this lecture. I have a brief uh, intervention. When one of the American societies, or let's say, one of the American societies, uh, criticized human rights in Russia, the Russian President Vladimir Putin said, literally, Russia will not copy American democracy or European democracy. Russia has its own principles and its own values and its own customs and traditions, and it will take its own values and traditions to make its own form of democracy. We in the UAE have our great religion, the Islamic religion, which is full of great principles and values and examples of tolerance. Tolerance is basically based on Islam. 
the rich Zaid, may Allah bless his soul, left us many examples and uh, many wise examples in life. Now we follow on his footsteps, follow on his footsteps while we look forward to a brighter future. Thank you. Please. My name is Dr. al al Afifi. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Khalid. It was really a very tiresome concept, the four pillars of uh, its uh, continuity of the UAE tolerance. I did not uh, find any uh, concept uh, similar to this uh, highly complex notion. Uh, Your Excellency, I was in a lecture three weeks ago in this uh, same venue about tolerance in the UAE. I hope that one of them would provide to us the, cons the, the document that was uh, 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 held by His Highness uh, uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, where the, the Pope and the Sheikh al Azhar attended uh, this uh, great uh, uh, event. We have not seen this uh, document that was signed by them or the declaration that was signed by them. Uh, secondly, tolerance is part of uh, uh, social peace. No country can live without it. It's not a new concept. And the UAE, like other uh, countries uh, that have been walking, uh, achieving progress in this domain, uh, achieved this continuity of tolerance uh, with, and boosted this uh, by the great uh, global event that took place uh, in terms of tolerance in Abu Dhabi. So we wanted Abu Dhabi to be the capital of tolerance. Do we really witness uh, the impact of this event? Now the wise leadership of the UAE gave us this wonderful event, uh, this huge event, the uh, elements of this great event do we still have, have it or not? Uh, we still hear some rhetoric, and this rhetoric is uh, not really uh, suitable. Now we are witnessing the uh, silver jubilee of the ECSSR. Why doesn't the ECSSR make, uh, uh, let's say, a gathering uh, for all the Nobel laureates uh, in the capital Abu Dhabi in the field of tolerance, especially that Dr. Jamal Sanad Suedi is... Uh, uh, a nominee for the uh, Nobel Prize. Why doesn't the Ministry of Tolerance, uh, let's say, should call upon Afra Hazza? Please, your question, Dr. Nidai. I don't have a question. This is just an intervention. Please uh, let others uh, participate. Of course, has uh, 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 not just Dr. Khalid has ideas. Please let me continue. Please. If he finds a question in my words, he can. Please. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, give me one more minute, please. We hope now that uh, we can establish the way for Abu Dhabi to be the capital of tolerance. We don't want to uh, assess the experience in its beginning. We want to uh, boost uh, this great experience and underpin it. My concept is that uh, my role in the uh, uh, concept of tolerance, uh, the general uh, uh, of uh, uh, Israeli police uh, is uh, actually part of my uh, tribe initially if we go back so can we be tolerant with them the concept of tolerance in this way will take us to philosophical complexities thank you for taking giving me two minutes for this uh, intervention thank you very much uh, it's as if you are saying we should not really theorize about anything and uh, what is what has been achieved is enough no there are uh, concepts that are being uh, introduced uh, and transparency. Thank you very much. One last question. Please. My name is... Uh, I'm a former ambassador, Ahmed Al-Husseini, a former ambassador. Thank you, Mr. Khalid, for this uh, wonderful lecture this high-profile lecture. It's a wonderful one. So far, if we go back to history, we'll find that uh, the late Sheikh Zayed, uh, may Allah bless his soul, used to talk about tolerance in a traditional manner, in uh, a spontaneous and traditional manner. He said that if neighbors are not uh, tolerant with one another and uh, if friends are not tolerant with one another, how can they, sur how can they survive? That's why the UAE was first and foremost established 
as uh, in terms of reconciliation. Every emirate has its own uh, government and its own independence. If we didn't have this kind of tolerance, uh, many issues would have not uh, been resolved, even with the Sultanate of Oman. So let's get back to the point that uh, in terms of tolerance, uh, after it has taken this, it, it's a constitutional framework, we need to uh, highlight the philosophy of this uh, tolerance. Clemency is different uh, from tolerance uh, and forgiving. Forgiving, you may forgive someone, yet uh, the uh, dispute still uh, is, exists. But clemency is, means forgetting about this dispute. So we have different terminologies and we are still uh, in the process of uh, defining tolerance. When I accept others, when I accept others, I can talk to them and uh, discuss with the, the issue with them and not just uh, go into a state of admission and give them whatever they want. Uh, as uh, highlighted by the, our colleague in terms of the Israeli uh, uh, leader who goes back to the same roots. So the, the question here, or the concept is to break down the silos created by hatred. Arab countries are now in dire need of tolerance. Let's say our sister country, uh, Algeria, needs tolerance. And uh, it happened once uh, in the year 2006, I believe, there was some kind of reconciliation in Algeria between the army and the different uh, uh, segments of the community. If Arab countries have this kind of tolerance between uh, the people and the opposition and the government and so on, many things would have been achieved. Now we are in dire need of tolerance. Why doesn't uh, the UAE become uh, the, uh, playing the leading role in terms of boosting this tolerance? It's uh, a highly civilized approach uh, and uh, more uh, than a political topic. Thank you very much. Thank you for this intervention. In conclusion of this uh, lecture, I would like once again, in the name of His Excellency, Dr. Professor Jamal Sanaswidi, the Director General of the ECSSR, I would like to once again thank His Excellency the Mr. Khalid Omar bin Gigga, and I would like to thank all of you for your kind attendance. Peace be with you, and we hope to see you once in, in upcoming events. Thank you, and peace be with all of you.